Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past I've said that we have till about summer or the middle of summer to find out whether things are going to get really bad as far as food security, as far as food scarcity. I still believe that things are going to get very bad and they have been getting bad over prices of food and everything at that. However, this email that I got from a farmer or a farmer's wife pretty much explains to you why it is that I say that we have till about summer and that we should be preparing as much as we can now before summer gets here. Because why not prepare now before we find out bad news? I would rather be prepared early than to start preparing when it's too late. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this off. That way you can listen to it from a, I call her a farmer because she is a farmer. She's the wife of a farmer. So in my opinion, she's a farmer as well. She's in the know, right? She's living that life. Here she says, we are now 23 to 25 days to planting, still no rain and a lot of dry, hot wind. The next seven days, they are saying three or four days of high winds. And yes, we are watching the sky for smoke in case of fire. The pumps are still going 24 seven. When she says the pumps, she means the water pumps because they're having to irrigate their land to get ready for planting with water, you know, with well water or city water, whichever water it is, she didn't indicate what, because the weather's been so dry and arid. Tractors and planters are ready and seed is loaded on trailers and they are ready as well. And she says that the men are at the nail biting stage. And I would assume so, ladies and gentlemen, they are depending on the weather in order to know whether they're gonna get a decent crop or not, in order to know whether they're going to be able to afford to feed their families. Now remember from her last email, she said that instead of planting flowers this year, they were using all of that space to plant a garden. And she continues to say that the families of farmers are in high stress mode and sleepless nights at planting time. I just hold my breath until the middle of June. Most of the bad weather is usually over by then. They're worried that no rain and bills are now adding up. So they're already in debt and they haven't even put a seed in the ground. Our neighbors to the far east from us have had fires that burned everything for miles. Their barns, their farm equipment, their feed, their vehicles, trailers, and miles of fences. And fence costs about $4,000 a mile. And that was the cost about 10 years ago. So now she's saying, I don't know what the cost would be now. But those farmers that were devastated by fire, that's exactly what happened. They were devastated. And there's no knowing if they're going to make a comeback. And listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is just very sad. You know, it is, it's today my husband came in and started turning off lights. I can just imagine this poor gentleman coming in his house, a person that, that has you know lived his life as a farmer who has a job that feeds us. It's because of our small farmers that we are fed, ladies and gentlemen. Right? And then he has to walk into his house worried and penny pinching and saying, you have to turn off all the lights if you're not using them. Yes, of course, that's a good practice no matter what. Even if you're a millionaire, you shouldn't leave the lights on if you're not using them. But they're doing this out of necessity, all right? Today, my husband came in and started turning off lights. He told me to cut out everything I could on the bill. If you're not in a room, turn off everything when you leave the room. He looked at my seed for the garden and asked if I had a plan on where each would be planted. And she says, yes, I am ready for when he says I can start. I have tons of carrots in my flower beds and onions in another. Garlic in an old stock tank full of dirt and water going onto the peach trees. So they're going to be all right as long as they plant their own food. And then she says that once she told them that their plan for their food was going to be all right, that he seemed to be a little relaxed. He gets so stressed out, she said. And she continues to say, this is a roll of the dice for all farmers. It's now or never. What they do now will be until the end of the year. She says that she got all of her old canning jars to get ready, and she also got out her oil lamps. Rudy, please tell them that winter wheat looks bad. Ours will go for cattle, not to feed people. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, what I was talking about on one of my previous videos, that although we have some wheat that we are har harvesting or carrying over, that a lot of it is not for human use because it's not at the very good to excellent quality. And here she's saying that all 
of their wheat that they grew is going to cattle feed. And she says that the wheat goes up north to other states. Holdover for 2022 or carryover is not looking good. Other states are not getting the rain they need. Others are getting floods. I don't know what those crops look like, but I have heard from farmers up in the northern states that they're not good. My husband has been pumping water to all of the tanks for the cattle. And listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. We are now feeding the cattle every other day. That takes tons of feed. And if it doesn't rain, the semi-load of feed will not last long. To all, she says, don't waste time. Get ready. I know some think that it's a joke, but the weather is no joke. The weather controls all of our food from all over this world. Tell them that it is time to prepare. Just in case we farmers can't get the crops grown this year, you will still need food. Blessings and prayers to all. I surely do hope that, in particular, that this family does well, but that all farmers do well. Because when all farmers do well, our country thrives. And let me go ahead and read you another short email that she sent me that has to do with a little bit of the financials about farming. And ladies and gentlemen, farmers pretty much work for the bank. And it's so sad, but it's true. And here she's referencing when I talked during a live stream about a farmer that I actually talked to who's been doing it all his life, uh, someone other than herself. She says, yes, the farmer that you talked to did know what he was talking about. I didn't write all of that due to most people not understanding how farming works and most think that we all live on government payments and are rich. They have to have a contract to plant peanut, cotton, wheat, and every other crop because it takes so much money to grow them. So it takes so much money, so much input cost to even get the seed in the ground, ladies and gentlemen, that most farmers, even small farmers, have to borrow that money up front. And the cost of borrowing, for those of you that haven't noticed, is going up, all right? So the input cost is gonna be even more now. So they are hoping that they have a higher commodity price. That way, when they write their contracts, they can be assured a higher price for the food that they're growing but first they have to grow it and harvest it ladies and gentlemen the banks want the contracts so that they know that they will get a return on their loans it is the way that farming is now you work for the banks or the man that owns the land that is the way that farming is now you work for the bank or you work for the person that owns the land the landlord gets one quarter and he pays one quarter for the fertilizer and chemicals. So if you're working for, for a landlord, if you're renting the land from someone, the way that you pay them is, is they get a quarter of the harvest, but they have to input one quarter of the cost for whatever chemicals and fertilizers go onto their field. And she finishes off by saying that she forgot that not everyone knows how farms work. And I would say that most people don't know how farming works and that she's probably right. A lot of people think that farmers, just because they have a lot of land or they farm on a lot of land, that they're rich, that they have a lot of money. And that's not just the case. A lot of them live year to year. As a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, a lot of farmers live year to year or harvest to harvest. And ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that the other farmer that I talked to during my live stream one of the things he told me to tell you all was, and I don't remember if he, if I mentioned this during the live stream or not, was that he said, get to know your local farmer, get to know your local rancher and trade directly with them. Buy your produce from them if you can, buy your meat products from them if you can directly. Because not only does it help you because you know exactly where your food is coming from, but it helps them because it cuts out the middleman and it gives them a little bit of breathing room. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, short videos today, I just want to go over that email with you. I think it's very important that we understand where our food comes from and that we understand the sacrifices that the people that produce our food have to go through because it's not all games, ladies and gentlemen. There are real lives at stake. And if they cannot be profitable, if this farmer right here, if this farmer and his family cannot be profitable, how long do you think that they will be able to farm? And then how long do you think it'll be before a big AG farm, ag farm takes them over? And then how long do you think it'll be before all farming in the United States 
is concentrated in the hands of just a few large corporations. It's already bad enough now as it is, but do we want it to get worse by more farms being sucked up into a big corporation of people that don't care about you? This lady here, all right, this very nice lady cared enough to send me a message so that I can pass on to my audience, all right, to you ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because she cares. Are big farms, are big farm corporations putting out messages saying, hey, we're going to have a bad harvest this year. Make sure that you prepare. I haven't heard any big AG corporations telling you all or telling all of us that we need to prepare. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the more control they have, the more power they have. So make sure that you prepare. Make sure that you get ready. Because worst case scenario is that she's right. Best case scenario is that they make a profit and they get to come back next year and plant again and feed us. Having said that, have a great day. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prabhupada. I'm out.